Seorg doesn't want them to leave till they've gotten them to confess to all their crimes, searched all their belongings to make sure they're not taking anything, and signed an affidavit saying they'll never sue the church, they'll never speak badly out against the church, and that everything they did was wrong and everything the church did was wonderful. And by that time, they've hoped to have convinced them to stay anyway, but if they had to leave, they want all of that done first. So there was a couple who twice left and then came back. They left without permission, they came back. So they were considered a very high security risk. My job was... Now, who were they? Do you remember? Sean Brennecke and his wife. I forget her name. So they had left twice. Just they'd gone to, like, to the, his parents' house, like 30 minutes away. But now they were considered a high security risk, even though they came right back. It was my responsibility to make sure they didn't do it again or that anybody else didn't do it. I had to have them under 24-hour security watch. What but does that, that mean? That means 24 hours a day, someone is with them making sure they don't go anywhere. And but how did you, who did you use to watch No one them? was allowed to do it because it's very strict in Scientology that if it's not your job, you don't do it in the Sea Org. There's like policies on it. Only do your own job. That was nobody's job. There was no job to do that. Right, so. But it fell under me. So I'd have to convince people to do it, convince people to let their, you know, their junior do it, etc. But at one point, I couldn't find anybody to do it. So I had to put a mattress outside their door and tie my arm to their door so that if they left, they would wake me up. It would like pull my arm and wake me up. So you're sleeping like this? <laughs> <laughs> For, I don't know, a while, a week or two. And so that was pretty ridiculous. So you didn't want this to happen to you? No. I can understand that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I was doing it to people and I, I regret like everything I ever did. You did know? you feel bad about it at the time? I did. I felt really bad. I just wanted, I so badly wanted to be like the person who opens the cage and lets the birds fly away, you know what I mean? I wanted to let them go so badly and I wanted to go with them. <laughs> and the people who did finally get permission to go, I was like thinking, take me, I was so, I was jealous of them. <laughs> Not jealous, but... Envious. Envious, yeah, that's the right word. I was so <laughs> envious, like, oh my God, they're free, you know? And they're so brave to have, to have persevered through all of all of that, you know, and I never thought I could do it. And um, anyway, then there was a reorganization, and I became the ethics officer, and then the director of inspections reports for the entire building, which is like 600 staff. And what was the name of that post? They, that was, I was the ethics officer, then I was, they had the department of inspections and reports, so for I was the director of inspection reports. For this now, it was called the flag liaison office. International Training Org became part of it. But this is more like f 400, 600 staff. That's the FOLO. As, no, that's um, the FOLO is the same, but lower. There's like a FOLO in every continent, like a FOLO in Europe. Yeah. This was the FLO, which is like the senior organization to Over all of the all FOLOs. Of okay. They're like lower management. So we this were, was a pretty we senior were, We were post. middle management. Well, I was also the security chief. That fell under me. The security for the chief liaison. for the flag liaison office, and this is the Hollywood Guarantee Building on Hollywood Boulevard. They have the, yeah, and they have the life exhibition there, and then they have the middle, the whole of middle management is there, and then OSA is there. But because OSA is very sensitive, Office of Special Affairs, you know, they deal with all the legal things. So the church, I wasn't the director of inspections and reports for that because you have to have special clearance, and that's all like super confidential. But now, but I was the security chief for them. But at we the did security HGB for the whole building. Is the international level of management? They're like they con they're considered upper middle management. So it's it's wise and and smy and smy and yeah, it is things. international to that degree. The only thing above it is RTC. Right. And uh, but they are they are Church of Scientology International. The like legally they're in they're. Their legal term. The is people Church at the building where you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's Church Scientology International. Right. So. Um, so that's a big job. Yeah, and um, I was. It was me and a, a girl younger than me who was about 14. For the whole building, and like three or four security guards. It was also my job to collect all the statistics every week. And there were a good 10 or 15 people at a time who wanted to leave, and I was responsible for watching them handling them to stay. There's policies, I guess, for public relations reasons that say if you want to leave, you have to be shipped out within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. 
but no one ever leaves in under like. Oh, I've never heard of in my anyone experience, leaving within in my 24 experience, hours. No, no one ever does. Never, and not even like, I've never even heard of a month, but maybe. But six months to a year and you're lucky, you know, two years sometimes. Because mm -hmm. one of the main reasons is they're trying to break you down. And another reason is you have to get a confessional before you go. And there's no one to give the confessionals. No one had that job. So, so how did you deal with it? They'd have to convince an auditor to do it, convince someone to take some time to do it. The organization is so bureaucratic, it's so ridiculous because there's all these jobs and there's all these policies saying you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, but you can't do this, but you have to do this, but you can't do this. And there's an expression, make it go right. You can't say I can't do this because there's no one there to do it. It's like make it go right, you have to do it anyway. You could get an order or like a program written and it says, you know, I don't know, set up computers in this office and set up a whole computer system, but there'll be no money to do it. <laughs> but that's no excuse. So you, 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 you try and get permission for money and you're told no money. There's no money to do it. But you still have to do it. So, so you have people yelling at you saying do it and then you try and get the money and they say there's no money and everyone is just like going round and round in circles the most unbelievable thing you've ever seen. You're yeah. ordered to do it, there's no money, so you say so they come in and they say Make it you go have right to do this and you say, Well, I didn't get the money approved and they say Your counter intention. Yeah. yeah, you they say you're reasonable, which to us now sounds like a good thing to be <laughs> <You're> <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> but in there it's they, not. they even preach like you should be unreasonable but Because they have know. a policy suppressive reasonableness. So if you take an excuse for something, like there's no money, you're being suppressively or if reasonable. If you're being logical <laughs> <laughs> very oh bad thing yeah, to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or they'd have to send, they'd get an order, you know, you get an order, send these people out to this other organization to handle them because they're not doing well. But it was no one's job to go. <laughs> so they'd have to find people to go. But there's also a policy that says um, don't do anything other than your job. Don't let your juniors do anything other than their job. So you'd say they, there's no one to go and these people can't go because it's off policy. Then there's another policy that says you cannot use policy to stop. <laughs> So you're using policy to stop, you're being suppressively yeah. reasonable, and you're being counterintention. And people spend months trying to like find someone to do something and there's mm. and there's no new, hardly any new people coming in and there's people leaving. So you know How did you stay the international training this? org when I first got there had like a hundred staff and a year later, a year and a half later had like forty. There's always constant struggle and arguments between the staff because someone can say, oh, look, I'm right, look at this policy, and the person says, yeah, well, I'm right, look at this policy, and they, they conflict, the policies conflict each other, and the, person, the third person can say, and if they're higher in post, most people will, like, listen to them and say, oh, no, look, I have this policy here, this, but, you know, you could always find a policy to conflict that one, I mean, I, just I, it doesn't make sense. I always oh. remember there's another policy in which there's a thing called an admin scale, and there's, like, a list of the importances of things, and the, one of the most important things 